In the Scottish capital, Edinburgh, the kilt is never far out of fashion. And because he can only really feel like a local wearing one, Don Jaffe from the U.S. is picking out an appropriate sample for his ride on the Royal Scotsman. He's gone to Kenlock Anderson. Purveyors to the royal family, the firm is in the fifth generation of family ownership. I love the color. It makes it very dashing. I wish I could wear one. <laughs> they said there would be a formal evening and we would either be in black tie or a formal kilt. Well, rather than carry a tuxedo around with me for the entire vacation, I opted to rent. And if I'm going to be in their country, I'm going to wear their dress. The train is waiting at Central Waverley Station, where guests are greeted by the general manager, Michael Andrews. He welcomes them with a traditional Gaelic toast. Ladies and gentlemen, slange. 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 The train heads north across the Firth of Forth. The observation car at the rear of the train has a small deck that offers sweeping views of the Scottish countryside. The three-day round trip loops round from Edinburgh to Perth, continuing on to Aviemore and then Inverness, in the heart of the Highlands. This is your room here. You can see the towel rail. And the shower is behind the door. A decorative bouquet of thistles, the Scottish national flower. The afternoon on board begins with a classic afternoon tea of sandwiches and scones, enjoyed in the company of fellow travelers in the spacious lounge. The Royal Scotsman evokes a more elegant era of travel, a century ago. We harken back to a tradition when this was the best way of traveling around Scotland, um, traveling from uh, country state to country state with your own private railway carriages, uh, the best of produce from land, from sea, from air, um, partying, hunting, shooting, fishing, and just enjoying life. And that's exactly what the 40 passengers on board do on their stop at the Highland estate of Rothy Marcus. One party shoots clay pigeons. Others engage in more leisurely pastimes, joining a guided walk across ruggedly beautiful terrain. Or a morning of fishing. Next stop, Strathela in Keith, the oldest operating whiskey distillery in the Highlands. It's home to the world-famous blended Scotch whiskey Chivas Regal. Cameras aren't allowed inside, allegedly because alcohol vapors pose a danger of explosions. We wouldn't want to provoke an untimely end to the trip and miss out on this breathtaking scenery. Now it's time for drinks in the lounge. Don Jaffe and the others are dressed to the nines. I now invite you to take your places in the dining room as dinner is now served. Thank you. Striding to dinner in a kilt takes a bit of getting used to. Scottish salmon for starters. The chef, Mark Tabarini, prefers regional ingredients. And if he doesn't have something in his kitchen, he knows where to get it. I guess one uh, lobster. I mean, no, we're going to Kyle. I can phone like, the fisherman in Kyle and say, is there any chance you can get me a couple of lobsters for tonight or for tomorrow morning? And we've got contacts where we can pick up pick up bits and pieces. There's a lady in uh, my league who gives us berries, she gives us fresh herbs. She picks them all herself and brings them down to the train. So there's things that we know that if we go to this place, we can get certain produce. Guests on board the Royal Scotsman do not dine in individual groups. They're seated at long tables. There's no seating arrangement. That makes it easy to strike up a conversation, and it fuels the convivial mood on board. Final destination, Dundee. The evening ends in the observation car. Everyone agrees, real men wear kilts. So it feels totally comfortable to me. I'm not sure I'd wear it at home, but I feel absolutely incorrect place while I'm here. That's why Don Jaffe can't pass up the chance to dance a reel on the platform at Dundee. It doesn't get more Scottish than this. 